Hey, this is Pamela Raven Schneider. I'm the retail editor for Blue Book Services, and this is the Produce Reporter Weekend Review. Greg, that is a fancy tater tie. I decided I'd still be in uniform for for Washington Conference, even though I I have returned home back to the office. But this is how we dress in the nation's capital, minus the potato tie. Only the classy people wear those. <laughs> You actually started there in the morning and are already back in the office. It's crazy. Are you going live right now? Yes. <laughs> I got my first heckler there. <laughs> you can say hi to Karen. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Greg's got his tater tie on from Washington this morning. <laughs> Good to see you too. Yeah. So you already did your elbow rubbing. Um, and I'm just getting started. Today is the first day of the Southeast Produce Council's Southern Innovations. Yes, okay, I had to remember the name of it. And it's all, all about what's new. Um, so I'm expecting, hopefully, a lot of new products because the last couple of shows that I've been to, tons of new products. And even just the news releases over the last like three or four weeks, lots of soft launches ahead of the big show in October. Yeah, I would expect that you'd see some good stuff, but not all the stuff, because the big one's only a month away. Right. I mean, that's why I said soft launches, because I'm sure there's going to be some people who are like, hey, we're officially introducing this in a month, so don't say anything about it just yet. Um, but perhaps I could get my hands on some things to try out in the kitchen like I did. Uh, what was it last week with the new Arc Foods uh, stir fry kit? We did that in the kitchen. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that there's going to be quite a few new things out there on this trade show floor. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it'll be a busy show. And how was the business in, uh, business land? In DC? Well, they don't actually do business there. They spend all of our money. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a little cynical. It was, uh, it's always a great event. They, uh, you know, IFPA puts it on now since the merger happened, it used to be a United event. They had, uh, the Senate ag chair, Debbie Stabenow and the house ag chair, GT Thompson all spoke at the event. And we had some great political analysis from analyst, Charlie cook of the cook report. He did a prediction for the 2024 election which I have a column you can read all about. It's uh, it's never too early to look for the next election. Um, he he predicts a Trump Biden rematch and uh, incredible low popularity for both candidates. So I can't wait for the next year. Yay! Super <laughs> exciting. <laughs> I think but, I think a lot but, of us are maybe not looking forward to that. No, but as far as the policy goes, everyone, you know, it's a lobbying conference. So people are are meeting with reps and senators and their aides. And really the two biggest things, I think there was a number of issues that they were taking up to the Hill. But I think the biggest ones, one was the produce prescriptions. We're seeing some success. We even ran some stories on that this week. There was a medical journal that came out that showed uh, a, a, sur a study that showed that produce prescriptions have worked really well in that study, increasing participants' uh, usage of vegetables by almost a cup per person and fruits by half a cup. So now we're starting to see that this might have some traction. And then the other big thing, of course, the Farm Bill, which happens every five years, and it's set to expire at the end of this month. No one is particularly optimistic that anything will get passed in the next two weeks. But there is some optimism that will happen before the end of the year. And produce used to not be a part of the farm bill very much. And uh, it has increasingly become that. But now there's there are industry in a position of defending its pieces of it. For instance, one of the proposals out of the House is to cut produce from women, infants and children, which is part of SNAP. And SNAP is 80 percent of the farm bill. It's a multi-trillion dollar program and uh and the feeding program is is a huge part of it so produce needs to stake its claim and debbie stabenow who is retiring at the end of this term kind of didn't really get into it but uh kind of hinted that the produce industry needs to start fighting harder and tougher maybe dirtier to not yep, only you mentioned that their, not only keep what they've got but start being going on the offensive and take it away 
from some of the other groups that, I mean, several speakers pointed out that part of the message should be if the USDA is recommending half your plate is fruits and vegetables, why are fruits and vegetables somewhere between six and 10% of spending in, in the farm bill? It does not add up. And that's a message that can resonate. And our reps need to hear that, that that's part of it. And we probably need to cut some of those other foods if, if the industry is going to start playing dirty and maybe they're going to some, get some allies in that fight. Well, and hearing from the business side of things and not just the um, nutrition advocacy groups, I definitely think is something that is, uh, it can only do good for the produce industry. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, lots of people, I mean, retailers make tons of money at, at SNAP and they would probably make more money if it was fresh produce because we know their margins are higher than they are in center store on the less nutritious foods forward to the coverage and your column talking about this year's election predictions. I had a really good experience here in just the Charlotte area um, and something that I, I feel like maybe people forget that that's the host city for this year's SEPC and this is one of the hottest areas for retailers duking it out. Like I did some store checking this morning and I hit uh, Lowe's Foods Publix, Food Lion, Patel Brothers. I've never been to a Patel Brothers. Lidl, Harris Teeter. I mean, and that was just like within like a two or three mi square mile radius. And that's not all that I'm going to see here. So you'll have to check out um, I produce a family TikTok to see some of those. And of course, I'll write up some analysis that goes with some of the more interesting ones. I've already published one from Lowe's Foods. Lowe's Foods is one of my favorite stores to go check. I, I, I think I actually saw the exact same location nine years ago. And it is such a fun and interactive experience. So great place to do some store checking. So look forward to that. So you did not find a food desert, it sounds like. No food deserts in this area, for sure. Um, I did really want to go look at Lidl, though, because, you know, first of all, I love Lidl in Europe. Um, but Lidl here in the U.S. has kind of had some stumbling blocks. They've closed some stores recently. Um, and in this market, Aldi is so well established that how can Lidl be successful? And uh, you'll have to check out the video for what I think of the local Lidl here in the Charlotte area. Can't wait. All right. Well, that's it for the Produce Reporter Week in Review. If you are not getting the Produce Reporter newsletter, you need to go to ProduceBlueBook.com and sign out. And now I'm going to follow the crowd over to the opening reception for SEPC Southern Innovation. And I'm going to get back in my home office uniform. <laughs> All right. See ya.